the second speaker is uh, Scott Garrels, uh, who is a clinical psychologist and uh, assistant research professor uh, in the School of Psychology at Fuller Theological Seminary in Pasadena, California. He's currently one of the, uh, the few uh, scholars addressing the parallels between uh, mimetic theory, religion, and the empirical research on imitation. And as, as a result of his, wor of his work, uh, yes, he was honored um, with the Travis Award for Integration in Psychology and Theology, and he was the recipient of a Templeton Foundation grant for, for, for a research project titled Imitation, Mimetic Theory, and Religious and Cultural Evolution. A book titled Mimicing Science is forthcoming for uh, Michigan State University Press. Probably next year, right? Okay, and I the title of his paper is uh, From Mimetic Continuities to Collective Violence, The sing Singularity of uh, Girard's Fundamental Anthropology. Okay, good morning, everybody. Um, I, first of all, I just want to start by saying thank you to the organizers for putting this together, Pierre Paolo, uh, Paul, and Christopher, and for inviting me. It's my first time to Cambridge, and I'm very grateful to be a part of this uh, very exciting meeting. Um, what I'm going to be doing this morning, my main task here is to talk about human imitation from two different perspectives. The first one is from an empirical science perspective the science of human imitation that has developed more or less in the last 30 years um, from a wide range of disciplines. And the second perspective on imitation is, of course, Rene Girard's mimetic theory of human culture and religion that was developed out of a very separate set of disciplines from the humanities, literary analysis, anthropology, and religious studies. And although both, and uh, Rene's theory was developed at least 20 years before most of the major discoveries came out of the sciences that I'll be talking about today on human imitation. And even though both of these fields have developed separately from one, one another over the last several decades, they both have converged on a couple of very fundamental dis uh, assumptions that human imitation is a very pervasive phenomenon in human life, especially human imitation at a level below conscious awareness that we now know is foundational to what is unique about the emergence and evolution of human cognition and culture. So in terms of mimetic continuities in the introduction, Paul talked about how one of the main uh, objectives of this conference is to think about how we get from biological evolution to cultural evolution and the continuities that we observe from animals to humans. So in one sense, this talk is a, a way to show how that is accounted for in the empirical sciences using imitation and as well as Rene Girard's theory. Uh, the other sort of continuity that this, that this presentation I hope will demonstrate is the continuity between the empirical sciences their understanding of imitation and Rene Girard's understanding of imitation. And of course, the main difference being that in the empirical sciences, whereas imitation is understood as a, as a fundamental mechanism allowing for the transition from biological evolution to cultural evolution, imitation in and of itself in very dynamic ways, what Rene Girard adds to that, of course, is violence, imitation and violence. So. Um, what I'm going to do is, is start off with a brief introduction to Rene's theory, just a, a brief introduction. Then I'm going to go into a presentation of some of the major findings in the empirical sciences, and then come back to Rene's theory in light of these findings. I'm not sure how to advance. 
Thanks for the flag, Jerry. There should be a button like there. Yeah, it's okay. There we go. Oops, no. Okay, I'm just trying to get rid of this thing here. Okay. okay. Just, uh, just out of curiosity, I know we're here to talk about Darwin and Girard. How many of you are f have read works by Rene Girard and are familiar with his theory? Just out of curiosity. Okay, so a good majority of you. Okay, so really, really briefly, and and uh, another purpose of this lecture is to provide sort of a brief introduction to some of the main ideas of Rene's work and imitation in general. As, as you know, Rene's first main discovery that, you know, he's known for a, a theory of violence, but really what runs throughout his work is his understanding of imitation. And in his first work is where he defines the uniqueness of human desire, not as something that's autonomously uh, or instinctually driven, but is fundamentally social or imitative. And this is his idea of mimetic desire. Another way of thinking about that is, des is that desire is triangular. So rather than an object being desirable to me primarily based on the intrinsic value of the object or some intrinsic uh, aspect of myself, there's a fundamental social relationship that Rene calls uh, triangular. So my interest in an object uh, gets filtered through the interest of somebody else. So this is the, the, the uh, referential triangle that builds value in an object based on the social value given to it through another person. And of course, this can go in two different directions. If I become interested in something that someone else is interested in, we can share attention on an object or some activity and bond over it, and this is a very positive thing, or it could go in the opposite direction, which is it can become very competitive, especially if that one object is something that only one of us can have. And of course, the classic example is the Shakespearean example of two best friends who fall in love with everything together, including their the music, literature, and so forth. And they seem almost inseparable, as if they were fated to be best friends forever, right? Until one day, they fall in love with the same woman. And suddenly, only one of them can have them. And suddenly, they become bitter rivals. And forever, uh, throughout the, the tragic play, they are at each other's throats. So Girard observed that triangular desire produces enormous value in things that have, in some ways, have no inherent value except for what it's given to it in the social relationship. And this can lead to, of course, intense rivalry and conflict. And Rene, in his second main theory of the scapegoat mechanism, saw that these mimetic rivalries can spread throughout entire communities threaten the entire social order, and the default way that humans resolve their in-group conflicts is to single out, find some surrogate substitute victim upon which they can uh, place all of the blame for the communal conflict, destroy that victim, rid themselves of all of the evil and animosity in the community. So this is his scapegoat mechanism, which he develops through his anthropological readings. The third part is his fundamental anthropology that he introduced in his book, Things Hidden Since the Foundation of the World, where rather than just accounting for the scapegoat mechanism, which is also his account of where human ritual sacrifice comes from, in Things Hidden Since the Foundation of the World, which was published in French in 1978, he also describes the process, he goes back even further to account for the process of hominization, the passage from animal to human. So I sort of introduce these main ideas because they'll run throughout this talk. And also these dates are very important since if we think of the, the time